Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and this is a complete features and settings guide for the Insta360 ONE X2. We're going to be going through all the photo and video features and where the settings are in both the in-camera menus and on the app. So that hopefully when you get your ONE X2 you can get straight to creating some awesome content. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so we've got the Insta360 ONE X2 here and as it's seasonal, I thought I'd put it in front of a Christmas tree and a fireplace. But if we just switch it on, with this side button here. And you'll notice it's not actually a fireplace, it's just an iPad playing a fireplace video. But it looks cool in the video anyway. This is the screen you'll first see, and it's just a display of your image, and instantly you can look around um, by just dragging the image around like that. And I'm first gonna go through the settings that are the same no matter what mode you're in. Um, then I'm gonna go through each feature and each mode and show you the different settings available within those modes. So all we need to do is tap the screen and then all the settings will show up like this. So first let's swipe down from the top. And the screen's not exactly the most responsive screen so I might mess up a few times. I do apologize if it takes me a couple of tries to tap something. But here on the top left we have the brightness setting of the screen, pretty self-explanatory. You just drag that up and down to adjust the brightness. We're gonna keep it relatively high and you swipe back like that to go back to the settings. The next setting here is to lock the touch screen. So if you're doing something action related and you don't want to accidentally press something, that locks the screen. Then all you have to do to unlock it is tap it, swipe up, and you've unlocked the screen. So if you do end up in a situation where it looks a bit odd and you can't get back to a sort of normal looking, here we're upside down as you can see, you can just press again and tap this little rotation button here and it will automatically fix it on the center of one of the lenses. And if you want to fix it on the other lens, you just click it again and it will reverse like that. So let's swipe down from the top again. On the bottom left, we have the option to change the LEDs. Um, so you can't see it at the moment, but there's a blue LED at the bottom of the camera, um, which you can turn on and off. I just have it off because it's a bit, you know, a bit jarring sometimes, it flashes quite a lot. So I have that off normally. And on the bottom right, we have the option for quick capture. And basically that allows you to press the record button when the camera is off and the camera will automatically turn on and start recording. Um, and then when you stop recording, the camera will turn itself back off again. So now we have that to on just because it's really nice if you want to record something really quickly, um, but you can toggle that there. On the top left here of the screen, you can connect your AirPods up which is quite handy for sound purposes, obviously. On the top right here, you've got your audio recording settings. Um, so you can set it to wind reduction or 360 direction focus. Um, basically, the camera's got four microphones. I'm assuming with wind reduction, it uses a couple of those microphones um, just to detect the wind and sort of counteract that. But if you didn't want that on and you're recording indoors and you didn't need the wind reduction, you could change it to 360 direction focus. And I'm assuming that gives you a sort of um, stereo sort of audio as if it was coming from around you like the 360. On the bottom left here, we have option for voice commands. You can change that on or off. At the moment, I just have it to off because I don't want to accidentally turn it on for any reason. And at the bottom right, we have settings. So if we go into settings, we can go into general. The first option is USB mode. You can change it to desktop, webcam, or Android. Below that, you've got prompt sound and you can turn the sounds on or off. Uh, the sounds play when you turn it on, when you take a photo, when you change the mode. Um, so I just have it off because the thing is when you turn this on, it makes a shutter sound as if it's taking a photo and people tend to look around. So I just have the prompt sound off by standard. Underneath that, you've got the, oh, you've got the Bluetooth wake up. So this allows you to use your phone to wake up the device. I just have that off at the moment. And underneath that, we have auto power off and you can change the time it takes before the camera powers itself off. Finally, at the bottom we have anti-flicker. As you see, it's a little bit too responsive sometimes. So anti-flicker, basically you can change the hertz that you want it to be at. Um, obviously, usually in the US it's 60 hertz and in Europe it's 50 hertz, um, but I just set it to auto, um, then it does its thing automatically. Underneath that we have language. Obviously self-explanatory, I'm gonna keep that to English before I accidentally change it. And we have the gyro calibration. Obviously inside the gyro obviously helps stabilize the footage afterwards um, and you can calibrate 
using that process. So underneath that we have Bluetooth remote and if we click that you can connect it to any generic Bluetooth remote um, and use that to start and stop your recording etc. Underneath that we have screen auto sleep and I'm not sure why this isn't in the same place as the auto turn off um, but it is here and again you can just set the timer for when you want the screen to go to sleep after not using it. And it also goes off during recording as well. Um, so if you're recording and you don't um, and you don't press the screen for a while, it will automatically go to sleep at carry on recording. Um, probably keep this on don't sleep if you're you know, recording for long periods of time and you still want to see the screen. Otherwise the screen will turn off mid recording. Underneath that again we have voice control and you can choose your language that you want to use the voice controls in. Got SD card and here you can see how much space you've got left on your SD card and also format it there at the bottom. Then we have video encoding. Inside video encoding you'll see you have two options 360 cam and steady cam. Um, this camera obviously has two ways of filming. You can either film in 360 or you can film with that sort of action camera look where it's just a normal 16 by 9 image. So if you click 360 cam um, you have the option between H.264 and H.265. I haven't tested the quality difference between these two yet, um, but I can't imagine it's going to make a huge amount of difference. I do recommend keeping it on H.264 just because it's easier to edit with computers. H.265 is quite a difficult codec for computers to edit most of the time. So I think most people should keep it on H.264. Then finally at the bottom we have camera info. And here shows your camera name and the firmware you're on. And that is it in terms of the settings. So swipe back up to get to the main screen. And I'm just going to show you the playback functions if you swipe from the left here. You'll see the last photo or video that you've taken. And again you can just press play. And the last video I'd taken was a 180 degree shot so it was like an action cam shot not a 360 shot um, but you can see the little blue circle going around here that shows the duration which is pretty cool and then we can just pause it like that then if you press this little button down here it will show you four files at a time and here we have a 361 so I'm going to play that Uh, and when you're playing one of the 360 videos, you can also scroll around as it's playing, which is pretty cool. Again, we can pause, come out of that. And on the left here, you can delete your images as well. And that's pretty much it in terms of the playback functions. Okay, so now we're going to get into the nitty gritty and show each feature. And over the top, I'm hoping to overlay an example of each feature as well. Um, but the settings do change depending on which feature you're in. So on the screen here, we do have the battery indicator in the top left. An SD card indicator showing you how much space you've got left in your current setting. Um, the option changed between 360 degree mode and action cam mode, which is 150 degrees. Um, then we have obviously the center button, which I mentioned earlier. So let's change that back to 360. These are the fiddly ones for me. Okay, so we're gonna start at the top with standard photo. And you'll see with standard photo, um, you'll get this little image up here, which is highlighted in blue, and that is pure shot. Pure shot is set on as standard um, and basically what it does is sort of edits your photo for you, makes it a little bit more saturated, a little bit more vibrant um, and is on by default. So it makes it a bit more social media ready, um, but you'll see later you can also shoot in raw, which is probably better if you do want to edit it a bit later. Um, you can use pure shot and raw together. When you put the raw file into the desktop app, it will automatically add pure shot to it. And I think this kind of is the best balance because pure shot on a JPEG image um, doesn't produce the best dynamic range. But if you tap that, you can turn pure shot off and just have a normal um, shot that you can edit later. So I'm gonna keep that on for now. If you do see a lot of cuts, it's just because I'm trying to tap things and it's not tapping it the way I want it or something. Um, it does happen quite a lot with this camera, which is quite annoying. Um, but again, you can use the phone app to get around that if you really wanted to. 
So self-explanatory here, you've just seen me do it, but if you click this little camera icon down on the left, you can choose between photo, video, and your custom modes at the bottom. Um, Star Lapse is set as a custom mode uh, by default. So let's come out of that. And on the bottom right where it says 5S, that is like a sub menu and it changes depending on what setting you're in. In this case, it shows you the timer of the photo. So I've got it set to five seconds as a timer. Um, so if I set it to three seconds, for example, and press the, the capture button, there we go, I'm taking a photo. So in each mode, if we swipe from the right, there'll be a different amount of settings. So with photos, you've got the option, obviously, at the top between JPEG and JPEG and RAW. Um, if you're going to edit your photos afterwards, I definitely recommend JPEG and RAW, um, especially if you're using PureShot, because then you get the option to have one without PureShot as well. And if that, you have your exposure options. You can either choose between automatic or manual. So if we set it to manual here, you'll see that underneath this appears with your shutter speed and this menu appears with your ISO as well. So I'm going to go back. You can also change it to ISO priority, uh, shutter priority and isolated, which is where basically each of the lenses, the front and the back has its own um, exposure. So I'm going to set it back to auto as it generally works quite well. And then you have your EV, so basically if you wanted to expose it a bit more on the brighter side, you could bring that right up. And again, if you wanted it to be slightly on the darker side, maybe to retain some um, highlights, maybe in some clouds, you could scroll right down like that. I'm going to keep it on zero. Underneath that you have your white balance options. And you can just keep it on auto, or you can scroll through a list of custom white balances here if you wanted to keep your white balance set. So that's all your options you have in photo standard mode. So let's scroll back. So let's go back in now and change the photo mode to HDR. And you'll see that the pure shot has gone just because HDR um, essentially takes a few different photos, puts them together um, and creates an image with a high dynamic range. So pure shot isn't used in that process. And in the sub menu here, we get the option again between a little countdown. I'm going to keep that off for now. And when we swipe into the settings, again we have JPEG and RAW. We have the white balance, which I've accidentally set. Then we have how many photos it's going to take. Um, so generally, the more photos it takes, the better the dynamic range. Um, so, but the longer it will take. And then underneath that you have the different exposures that you want it to take. So if you're taking four different photos, plus two is a good option, um, but you can also go all the way down here to plus or minus four. Um, so that'll exp essentially expose four stops underexposed and four stops overexposed, as well as a couple of photos in between. Put them all together and you get a nice high dynamic range shot. Obviously, the more shots you take, the longer it's gonna take. So let's go back and let's go to burst mode. So in the sub menu of burst mode, again, just a timer there. And if we swipe from the right, we have JPEG and RAW, exposure, your EV, and your white balance. And underneath that, we have interval mode. So this is essentially like a time lapse mode. Um, but it's not doing the time lapse for you. It's just taking photos in intervals. Um, not sure why you'd want to do this, but it's there anyway. So you can't have a timer with this. So that's just set to off by standard. And if we swipe from the right, option between JPEG and RAW, exposure, the EV, the white balance, and how many seconds between each photo that you want. So let's scroll back, go back into the menu and choose night shot. In the sub menu of night shot, again, you can change the timer. And if you swipe from the right, you've got JPEG and RAW, 
and the white balance. You can't change the exposure here because obviously it's doing all of that in the camera to try and get the best shot for you at night. So then we're going into video modes. Let's start with standard. And in the sub menu here, we have a list of different resolutions and frame rates. So in 5.7K, you can film in 30 frames, 25 frames or 24 frames. In 4K, we can do 30 frames, 50 frames. And in 3K, we can do 100 frames uh, for when you want that slow motion. Let's go back up to 5K at 30, because that's the highest quality option, and press OK. So when you're in standard video mode, again, you can change the field of view from 360 to the 150 degree field of view. And that also changes the resolution from 5.7K to 1440p. Um, and it will change to 50 frames per second. You can click this here and you can actually change that to 1080p at 30 or 50. You can also click the pro mode, um, which allows you to add the flow state stabilization afterwards in the studio. Um, the normal stabilization is good enough for me, so I don't tend to go into the pro mode. Um, so let's tick that and come out of that. And again, in video, you have the option at the bottom to change your field of view from ultra wide to wide to linear. Now I've tested the quality of this 150 degree mode um, and it's just not very good. It's not going to stand up to any action cameras um, and you're probably better off recording in 360 um, and chopping it up in the studio. Finally at the bottom right here you can actually change the orientation. If you wanted to record a portrait video you can click this little button and there we go we're recording a portrait video. Or say you wanted to hold the camera to the left you could also do that and it will automatically rotate as well if you wanted to hold it landscape. I'm going to swipe from the right and again you have the option between exposure, your EV, your white balance and at the bottom here we also have a colour mode. So by default it's set to vivid so you get nice bright saturated colours but if you wanted something more editable you could either go with standard or go with log for those flat colours um, that you can grade later. I think standard's probably the best option if you did want to do a little bit of grading. Um, if you're doing this professionally for whatever reason, Log might be a good option. If you're whacking it straight on social media, then Vivid is a good option as well. So swiping back then, let's go back to video and HDR video. HDR video is only available in 5.7K and it's at 25 frames or 24 frames. And if we swipe from the right, the only option you get is white balance. Again, the camera's doing the HDR effects for you, so you can't change your exposure here. Then we're going back into the settings and we're gonna go down to time lapse. Now in time lapse, the only option I've got available here is 5.7K at 30 frames. Obviously what it's going to do is it's going to put it all together for me and that's going to be the final resolution and frame rate of the time lapse video. So if I swipe from the right here, I have the option of exposure, the EV, the white balance, the colour mode again and at the bottom here you also get the seconds between the photos taken. Um, it's set to two seconds by default I think, no it's set to five seconds by default. Um, but you can go all the way up to 120 seconds between photos. It really gets me that for certain modes where it'd be nice to have the settings already available on the screen, they're sort of hidden within the menus. So for example, time lapse, it'd be nice to have the interval settings somewhere here, but you have to go all the way into here and then scroll down to the bottom just to get to your interval for time lapse. Um, so that's a bit odd for me, um, but hopefully they can change that in firmware. So we're going back into modes and then we've got time shift. Now time shift is essentially just recording a video, but afterwards it will allow you to speed up certain parts and add motion blur um, so that you get a really nice sort of time lapse, hyperlapse style video that you can also slow down um, to look at specific objects or specific locations um, within the video. So the result is basically a time lapse video that you can slow down into a normal video at times where you need to. With time shift on the right menu, we have the exposure, the EV, the white balance and again your colour mode there. And in the sub menu 
we have 5.7K at 30 frames, 25 frames or 24 frames. Now we're going to our next menu item, which is bullet time. I haven't actually used the bullet time effect yet because I don't have the stick, but you can change it. It automatically changes it down here at the bottom to 3K at 100 frames. Obviously, you need it to be as slow motion as possible um, for the bullet time effect to work. And if you swipe from the right here, we get exposure, EV, white balance, and the color mode. So I'm going to scroll back. Then we're going to change to our custom modes. So to demonstrate the custom modes here at the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into video mode standard. I'm going to change it to 4K at 50 frames per second for when I want that slow-mo 360. Then I'm going to swipe from the right, go to um, my EV and raise that to plus one. Then for fun, I'm just going to go to white balance. Change that to 5000 and record in log. Okay, then I'm going to swipe away from this. And I'm going to go into the custom settings again, click where it says none and save. So now if I go into the photo, standard photo setting at the top just to get away from that, and I go back into custom settings and go to my saved custom setting. If I click that, everything that I just set is now saved and now comes back. So we're in 360, 4K at 50 frames per second. We're in the EV is plus one, the white balance is set to 5000 and we're set to log. So that's how the saved modes work. The final thing to note is the quick modes. Um, so it's just the most regularly used modes uh, are accessible from the bottom. And you've just got standard video, which is 5.7K, standard photo, and at the bottom, just a regular time lapse. So that's it for on-screen controls. Now we're gonna move over to the app. Okay, so now we're in the app. I've just had to do a firmware update. So apologies if anything has changed um, since the tutorial we just did. Hopefully it should all be the same. Um, we're just going to go through that very quickly as it's all pretty much the same stuff um, just to show you where everything is really. Okay, so at the top here on the screen we have the SD card space and the battery. And we have a little settings icon here which you can change, add the histogram and turn GPS on or off. Again, you can scroll around your screen, zoom in, zoom out. So we're in video at 5.7K, you'll notice this little paper airplane icon. If you click this icon, it goes into the fly through mode. I'll try and demonstrate that, but it's like an FPV mode that you can fly through things and do different transitions. Um, that's another tutorial entirely, um, but it's a pretty cool mode if you can master it. Again, just above the record button here, you can change between whether you want 360 or you want to, to choose one camera in the 150 degree view. But if you do go into this panorama view in the middle, it'll automatically change to photo. So on the left of the record button is your preview window. So if you click that, it will take you to the latest photo that you've taken. Here's the photo we shot earlier um, in the last demonstration. And again, you can just look around, zoom in. You can also edit things in the app. I'm not gonna get into it in this video because I think that's a different video entirely. Another way to preview your photos and videos is to go the, use the back button in the top left, make sure album is selected at the bottom, and make sure camera is selected at the top, and you can preview all the 360 photos and videos that you've taken. So here's a 360 video here, and you can look around, um, and again, you can edit it by putting keyframes in the bottom with these edit tools here. So let's go back, and let's go into the camera using the yellow camera icon at the bottom. So on the right of the record button, we have these settings menus here. This one generally just changes the exposure and the white balance, and that's pretty much all you need to know about this one. And on the settings on the right, um, it changes depending on which mode you're in. So again, you can change the video mode between standard, HDR, time lapse, time shift, and bullet time. You can change the resolution and frame rates here, which we went through in the last demonstration, and you can change the color modes. So coming out of that and going into photo, again, you can switch between 360, panorama 
and 150 degree mode. Again, you've got the exposure and white balance, but in settings, you, can, you now can change the photo settings between standard HDR photo, burst, interval photo, and night shot. Next to that, we have the option to set a timer on the photo, anywhere between three seconds and 15 seconds. And after that, we can turn pure shot on or off. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way in the app to change the recording from JPEG to RAW and JPEG. I think you do have to do that in the camera, which is a little bit annoying, um, but you just have to get around it. In the app, we do have the option also to go live, um, so you can connect it up to your Facebook account, YouTube, or other streaming platforms, and go live in 360, which is a pretty cool thing to have. Um, and again, you can only do this in the app, as far as I know. So when you're in photo and video and you go to 150 degree mode, where we only use one lens, you can still change the field of view. And to do this, you have to go to the settings in the bottom right, and you'll see here you get the option between ultra wide and wide. Now, where's the linear, you might ask? They've actually put it in a separate menu for distortion. So if you go to no distortion, we end up in linear mode. A bit weird that they didn't put it all in the same menu like they did on camera, um, but that's just the way they've done it. So to come back to ultra wide, you have to turn distortion on and then you can switch between ultra wide and wide again. So that's been a complete features and settings guide to the Insta360 ONE X2. Hopefully you found it helpful and hopefully you can get straight into creating some content now. If you did find it helpful, then leave a thumbs up down below. And if you've got any comments or questions, leave them down below in the comment section and I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.